Hey, hey, hey. So we got a brand new report about the accuracy of wearable technology and smartwatches that was compiled together by this company called AIM7. There's no affiliation with us about what they do, but they covered you know, the Apple Watch, Aura Ring, Whoop, Garmin, Fitbit, Samsung, and evaluated all the data in terms of the studies that have been done on them in terms of their accuracy for like heart rate, heart rate variability, sleep, steps, all that stuff. And they compiled a nice report given their findings. And I wanna go over a lot about what I found in this report as I think it's really interesting. And personally, I really like this report because it let me know that I'm not crazy. Uh, a lot of times, because we review a lot of smartwatches and wearables like these, I test them really thoroughly to try to figure out you know, the accuracy on all these different metrics. And a lot of times I'll say things about the accuracy that you know people will comment back to me later saying, oh, that's not correct. Somebody else said this and somebody else said that. Uh, you must be testing it wrong when I'm not testing it wrong. And sometimes there are differences between you know, person to person and you know, how they're testing it and all that or what exercises they're doing while they're testing it. But I was happy to know that a lot, if not most of the things that I had found from testing these wearables uh, turned out to be the exact same kind of information that was pulled into this report. So to start out, it highlights that wearable devices have as much of a 20% error when measuring heart rate and caloric expenditure measurements can be off as much as 100%. And it goes into detail, uh, not only on wearables as a whole, but on each of these companies' watches individually. It talks about how you know 44% of people use wearables uh, to measure heart rate, and 42% use wearables to primarily track their caloric expenditure. On average, wearable fitness devices have a slight tendency to underestimate heart rate, and I think almost everybody finds this to be true, except for a few watches, but the vast majority of them underestimate them, if anything. And on average, there's a tendency for wearable fitness devices to underestimate caloric expenditure. Uh, again, I think most people find this uh, to be true. And what I thought was really interesting was that 60% of people use wearable fitness devices to track step count. So more people use fitness trackers and smartwatches to track their steps over things like their heart rate, uh, which is always interesting. And then on average, wearable fitness devices underestimated step count by 9%. And they go over the data on the step counts in this, but I think they do need to be clear that you know a lot of these watches nowadays the step counts can be calibrated. So I'm gonna assume that all the data on the step counts in this report are from uncalibrated step counts. Once you calibrate your step count for a lot of devices that allow calibration, I think that those numbers would be much improved. So, you know, as a whole, they rate heart rate tracking, you know, four out of five stars in terms of like its accuracy and I kind of mentioned that on average, it decreases accuracy as you increase, you know, intensity. Um, less stars go to caloric expenditure in terms of accuracy, and then about the same for step count, and then lowest of all is sleep tracking. And if you don't know by now, yes, like sleep tracking on most wearables and watches isn't that accurate. Uh, really at best, we're seeing about 80% accuracy on some of the better uh, sleep trackers and much lower than that on some of the ones that aren't quite as good. So let's go down and start looking at some of these wearables individually. Now, Apple Watches have been shown to underestimate heart rate by an average of 1.3 beats per minute during exercise, which is really good to have an average of being off by just 1.3 during exercise. That is fantastic, and that's why you know many people suggest Apple Watches uh, for tracking your heart rate. It's very accurate during exercise, though I will mention the Apple Watch Ultra, I don't think is as accurate as just the regular Apple Watch. Uh, due to its larger size, it, it actually tends to overestimate heart rate accuracy during exercise, at least from you know, my testing and, and from other people's testing too. Now, contrary to other wearable devices, during graded exercise testing, Apple Watch accuracy improved as heart rate increased. So that is another really interesting thing about you know, the Apple Watches. Most times, as you increase intensity, you're moving around more, it's gonna have a harder time tracking your heart rate accurately. Whereas in the case of the Apple Watch, due to how their algorithm works and however their sensors work, uh, it actually improves accuracy as you start increasing the intensity of your workouts. Now here it says, during graded exercise testing, Apple Watches have been shown to miscalculate caloric expenditure by as much as 115%, which is quite a lot. And I know a lot of people use 
you know, Apple Watches and other devices to count their calories. I don't even really check that out too much when I review devices just because they're all really far off and it's not really something that I find that valuable to look at when you're working out or throughout your day of, of seeing that number. Uh, personally, I like to have data that gives me numbers that I can make changes with or utilize and knowing you know, a calorie count supposedly uh, from the watch, it, it just doesn't provide a lot of value. So I'm not usually super interested in the accuracy of it one way or the other, but just know that Apple Watch accuracy for calories can be quite a bit off. Now, on average, the Apple Watches have a 0.9 to 3.4% error when measuring total step count. Again, that might be due to a calibration. And Apple Watches correctly identify when a person is sleeping 97% of the time. Uh, which is great. Uh, and most of these watches tend to follow that same pattern. They're very good at being able to tell when you fall asleep, uh, but not so good at being able to tell when you wake up. And you'll see that here, Apple watches correctly identify when somebody wakes up during sleep only 26% of the time. So that is uh, not that great of a number. And so in terms of the sleep tracking, Apple watch is generally very good, but I think it does miss out on some of the times when you're awake or when you wake up in the mornings, it, it can be off. Um, and then on average, Apple watches underestimate heart rate variability or HRV by 9.6. So that's another big number I wanna talk about is this heart rate variability, which is the biggest, probably most important metric to look at when you're trying to determine your recover, which is the biggest, most important number you wanna look at when you're trying to understand your recovery uh, for the next day or over a period of time. And so this heart rate variability is definitely underestimated a lot from the Apple Watch, as it is from a lot of the devices. And so that's a number we're gonna be looking at a lot as we go through the rest here. All right, moving on to the R ring. It has been shown to accurately measure resting heart rate. On average, the device demonstrated just a 3% error when measuring resting heart rate, uh, which is quite good. On average, the R ring tended to underreport resting heart rate by one beat per minute. Uh, which is really great. And as I've said with the R ring, I think it's a fantastic device when you're at rest and for tracking sleep, uh, but not so much when you're doing an activity and not so much for heart rate variability, uh, which a lot of people disagreed with. But as you'll see in this report, it kind of agrees with me on that too. So on average, the device demonstrated just a 13% error when measuring caloric expenditure. So more accurate for caloric expenditure than like the Apple Watch, if that's something you're tracking. The Aura Ring correctly identifies when a person is sleeping 94% of the time, so a little bit less than the Apple Watch. The sleep algorithm calculates total sleep time with 96% accuracy, so that's pretty good. And it correctly identifies time spent in light, deep, wake, and REM sleep 79% of the time. And 79% of the time is actually really, really good, and that's actually like a highlight here of the Aura Ring uh, with its new you know, sleep algorithms and tracking. It's pretty good when it comes to that sleep tracking. Uh, the R ring correctly identifies when somebody wakes up during sleep about 57% of the time. So it measures twice as many of those occurrences as the Apple Watch. And on average, R ring underestimated heart rate variability by 10, which is um, a little bit more underreported than even the Apple Watch. And that's what I found too, is that many of these watches tend to underreport uh, your HRV on average. And finally, it says the R ring demonstrated a 4.8% error when measuring uh, step count. So moving on to Whoop. Whoop has been heavily criticized by a lot of people for you know its accuracy, but in my testing, like across the board, Whoop is super, super accurate for both the heart rate and especially in the heart rate variability, which is why it's the tool I utilize for tracking my personal heart rate variability. As somebody who's been measuring my HRV for over 10 years now, I just find that Whoop more accurately reflects what's going on. But let's go ahead and read what they have to say here. On average, heart rate measurements performed by Whoop are 99.7% accurate. Whoop is 99% accurate when measuring heart rate variability with an average underestimated of just 4.5. So less underestimation of the HRV score. And I would even argue that it's more accurate in some other ways with how much the HRV can go up and down on a daily basis, whereas the other ones kind of keep it stagnant based on how their algorithm works. But that's interesting to see here. Uh, research has labeled Whoop's ability to identify specific stages of sleep as excellent. Other research has shown Whoop to have a high degree of consistency when measuring heart rate and heart rate variability. I personally haven't found the sleep tracking on Whoop 
to be as accurate, especially to that of you know the Apple Watch or the Aura Ring. I think it's pretty good, but not quite as good as those other options. Uh, Loop correctly identifies when a person is sleeping 90% of the time when monitoring sleep. So yeah, that makes sense. That's less than the other two that we looked at. Whoop correctly identifies when someone wakes up during sleep 56% of the time, so kind of on the same page as Aura. Whoop claims that their product does not count steps because yeah, da, da, da. They, they don't do step counting with Whoop. Instead, it gives you an overall like uh, score of how much activity you did throughout the day, uh, which personally I find much better because I'm not always you know, walking around. Maybe I go for a light row or a bike ride or whatever. And I like that it also includes the intensity in that kind of calculation. Uh, versus just like your total volume of steps. And then we have Garmin. So Garmin on average has been shown to have a 1.16 to 1.39% error when measuring heart rate. And I think most people would agree that many of the Garmin watches are very good when it comes to heart rate tracking, uh, both during rest and during exercise. A literature has shown that Garmin has a 6.1 to 42.9% error when measuring caloric expenditure. Again, it can be off by a, a fairly large degree. When measuring step count, literature demonstrates that Garmin has an average measurement error of 23.7%, but you can <coughs> calibrate it on Garmin, so I think that would probably improve that. Garmin correctly identifies when a person is sleeping 98% of the time when monitoring sleep, so that's great. Although they don't mention it here, but I don't think Garmin does a really good job at all of determining sleep stages. Uh, that's one of the areas it's pretty weak at usually. A Garmin correctly identifies when somebody wakes up during sleep only 27% of the time. And on average, Garmin underestimated heart variability by 22 milliseconds. So that's even a bigger gap than some of the other ones. And it is something that I've noticed as well that you know Garmin, Aura, and Apple Watch just all tend across the board to really underestimate that HRV, whereas you know Whoop is much more uh, accurate in that, which is important to me. And actually, I'm in the middle of a review right now of the Polar uh, Grit X Pro uh, watch, and that too, actually, I feel has really good heart rate variability tracking. And it's very similar and in line with the algorithm and how it works and the numbers that I'm seeing as uh, Whoop. So I'll have to get all the numbers to make my complete determination on that, but it looks really good if you are really focused on using HRV as a data point to help determine your training or your health and, and all that. It also goes over you know, Fitbit and Samsung. It says Fitbit has been shown to underestimate heart rate by an average of 9.3 beats per minute during exercise. And yeah, I mean, Fitbit isn't really well known for its accuracy at all during exercise. On average, Fitbit displays a 14.8% error when measuring caloric expenditure. On average, Fitbit miscalculated step count by 9 to 21.9%. Again, it can be calibrated. And Fitbit devices tend to overestimate total sleep by 7 to 67 minutes, which is a pretty big range. I'm not sure if it's going to be that far off of by 67 minutes. It's kind of in line with some of the others. And then there's Samsung. I haven't really tested much of the Samsung wearables, but according to this report, they've been shown to underestimate heart rate by an average of 7 beats per minute during exercise, which uh, is not that great. It's kind of like the, uh, not as bad as Fitbit, but not nearly as good as the others. Uh, Samsung devices display a 1.08 to 6.3% error when measuring step count. And on average, they've been shown to have a 9.1 to 20.8% error when measuring energy expenditure. And on average, they underreport heart rate variability by 18.24 milliseconds, which again, is quite a big uh, underestimation of your heart rate variability. But of course, you know, having an average underestimation of your heart rate variability isn't going to be the only thing you need to know because you know, the other issue that you have to look at with a lot of these smart watches and wearables is not just if they're under-reporting what the actual number is, but also if it's like reporting the ups and downs in reflection of what your actual HRV is. And for example, my, my biggest issue with Aura and the way they calculate with their algorithm for HRV is it makes your HRV very flat line, like it barely moves up and down uh, day to day, which means you know, some days it's gonna be pretty accurate, and other days it's gonna be pretty far off, whereas if a watch was underestimating your HRV, but it was following in line with your actual HRV scores, that wouldn't be as bad, because at least you would still get that feedback and data about what's improving and not improving, and which days are higher and which days are lower. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Uh, this is Colin Jenkins with Connect the Watts. Appreciate you being here, and I'll see you next time.